What's going on guys, unknown player here and today we're going to be going over the latest Destiny news and announcements from Bungie. Once again, not a massive amount of stuff, of course there's no reveals or breaking news by any means because Bungie is still holding off until closer to the reveal next month on May 18th where we get full Destiny 2 gameplay. But as usual, they've outlined a few things going on in the near future that I'll be letting you guys know about. So first off, what's new on the Destiny 2 front and what have Bungie said? Basically nothing, other than the fact that if you're looking for more Destiny 2 news, then await future notifications, and they're still working behind the scenes to put on a good show, so nothing really new there. Of course they're keeping their lips sealed until closer to the actual reveal event. So of course next week marks the fourth and final raid that's going to be coming back, being Wrath of the Machine. So after that raid has dropped, you can basically consider Age of Triumph done or pretty much completed seeing as all the main content hasn't pushed out. The main objectives after that are basically to complete the record book and obviously Iron Banner would have been done. So expect things to be pretty quiet and I would probably anticipate Bungie to start releasing some kind of teasers. Obviously it won't be anything massive, but they're basically going to want to let the entire world know that Destiny 2 is having their reveal and they're basically going to be pushing the word out to everyone. So expect a ton of hype and they're really going to be pushing this event because it's probably the most important event for the Destiny franchise. So after Wrath of the Machine is out in the weeks to come after that, expect them to start talking about it. They do have one thing that's planned in between then and that is the next actual hotfix patch. Now this I talked about in a few recent videos, but essentially fixing a loss of quality of life updates. So I expect this patch to be fixing a bunch of the bugs and any of the problems and issues that came with Age of Triumph. They haven't mentioned any weapon balances or sandbox changes. I don't think they plan on having any in this patch, but so far they're calling it 2.6.0.2 and they've said it should be arriving this calendar month. So sometime in April, expect that to be dropping. There'll be a couple of maintenance downtimes and things to download with it. But of course, that's what's going down with the latest update for Destiny. But the biggest thing I'm sure a ton of you guys will be relieved to hear is they're fixing the multiple records issue. So thankfully, there won't be that notification popping up every five seconds, which should be pretty nice. But that should be one of the many things being fixed in this patch. Now, they also mentioned some issues that were reporting with a lot of players not getting their code to get the t-shirt for completing the Age of Triumph record book. And something I've seen a lot in my Twitter and comment section as well. But they said they investigated and actually identified the problem and it's since been resolved. So all of you guys not being able to get your t-shirt should now be fixed and then refresh the database. If you go to your Bungie.net profile, you should be able to get a new code and get your t-shirt and the issue should now be fixed. So of course, as you know, next week is the Wrath of the Machines turn to get the new rewards added to it in the weekly featured raid and the challenge modes. Of course, it will now drop those four new exotics. So of course, as you guys know, I'm definitely looking forward to it. It's my favorite out of the four raids and the weapons are actually really, really good, especially those primaries. And with burns, they're going to be some of the best weapons in the game, definitely for PvE. And I want to talk about the weapons and go over what's worth looking out for and what burns are going to appear on what weapons. So the number one weapon I'm definitely looking forward to, and I think it's probably going to be the highlight of these Wrath of the Machine primaries, is the Pulse Rifle, the Steel Medulla. Now this one is actually going to have Void Burn, which is very rare. Most of the weapons we've got so far with Void Burn have been pretty bad, to be honest, with the Doom of Chelchis, which is decent as a scout rifle, but the reload is very slow. I was looking forward to it myself, and I tried it out, but it reloads very, very slowly, especially compared to that like, Vision of Confluence, which seems to beat it in every single way. And the other two weapons are the Zowley's Bane Hand Cannon and also Word of Crota, which are both in that bad archetype, and they're just not great for PvE. So in general, they're not good weapons. However, the Steel Medulla is a very, very strong weapon. Its hackers has got four round bursts, and it's just got amazing with extra bonus damage for Fallen and the full auto and the bonus damage when you land all your shots. So this thing with Void Burn is definitely going to be the best Void primary in the game, especially seeing as all the captains have Void Shields. This thing is going to be amazing and definitely very, very good for the raid itself. So next up is the Chaos Dogma being the Scout Rifle. This one is going to do Arc Burn, which is interesting as well. And this is basically a boss a DPS killer. Again, it's kind of strange because you wouldn't really want to use an exotic weapon in your primary to DPS a boss. You'd probably want Sleeper or Dark Drinker or Black Spindle. But if you do want to use that for some reason, this is definitely a good choice. And if you want some Arc Burn, this is also going to be a pretty good choice too. So next up is the Fever and Remedy, which is of course the Hand Cannon. And this one is going to be doing Solar Burn, which is the first four Hand Cannons. Of course, the Fate Bring and all the other two are Void and Arc. So this is the first Solar Hand Cannon, which is nice. So there's nothing really massively stand out about this weapon. It's just a decent gun, very solid and reliable. Doesn't have anything special to it like Fate Bringer, which is cool, of course. But this one is kind of ordinary. It's got the bonus agility and bonus damage with reactive reload. So it's okay. Of course, it does also have the bonus damage to Fallen, which is helpful. But if you want a Solar Hand Cannon, this is a pretty good choice. And finally is the Genesis Chain, which I do think is going to be second best to Steel Medulla. The Auto Rifle, of course, with Firefly. This one is also going to be doing a Solar Burn. So I'll say this is probably going to be the second best Solar Primary in the game. Second to the Vision of Confluence, but probably better than the Abyss Defiant from Crotar 
even though that thing can stun wizards, this one's got fireflies. So this is going to be a really good weapon. Like I said, these guns are all very solid for PvE. So those ones to look out for, especially the pulse and the auto, the two main highlights in my opinion. And of course, in the meantime, there's Iron Banner Control. Let me know how you guys are getting on with that too. Of course, you need to get a rank 5 in there to get that record book node complete. So definitely worth hopping in and getting one character as rank 5. And if you're going to do that, make sure you do a Nightfall on that character because it does give you that Radiant Light buff, which is going to boost your rep gains by 20%. So make sure you do that first and get Iron Banner done. And of course, next week is the Wrath Machine Raid, which I'm definitely looking forward to. So there you go. That is a roundup of everything happening in the Destiny world and things to be aware of. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating would be much appreciated. Of course, make sure you are subscribed so you keep up to date with the latest Destiny and Destiny 2 news. And I'll see you guys next one.